What up everyone, it's your girl, Superwoman. Hopefully this is working and the YouTube gods are looking down upon us. Welcome to Ask Superwoman Live, the live stream I used to do on the 14th of every single month, but now I do it whatever goddamn day I want because it is too annoying and too difficult to do on the 14th. And today is really, really, really special and awesome because I have a special guest here and we have a special theme. The theme for today is cut the BS. But before we get into that, I want to tell you how you can get into this conversation because it's going to be lit, it's going to be spicy, it's going to be honest, it's going to be intense. Use the hashtag AskSuperwomanLive and tweet me at iisuperwomanii to join this conversation. Send me some questions, let me know your thoughts and feelings. I'll be retweeting and checking during the show. For one hour we're here. The one hour might not be enough. We might extend it. We'll see. We'll see how we feel. So, let's jump right into it. I want to waste no time. I won't waste no time. I have a friend who shall remain unnamed who is on a very special journey. I've known this friend for like a really long time. And this friend is doing this thing where he's like, I'm going to say yes to everything. I'm really honest. I'm going to do this thing where I accept love and I hash out all the beefs I've got. And I'm just like, I can think of at least three times this person has annoyed me. And so this is perfect because now I can have an honest conversation with them because they have to say yes to everything. So for this episode of Cut the BS, I'm actually really happy because the person is my friend and even... You know, if you wouldn't talk, his body's nice, and so I'm down for that as well. My friend, give it up, cue the music, Yusuf, aka Fusi Tube, get out here! <laughs> Shining, shimmering, splendid, <laughs> tell me, Prince. <laughs> cut the music, cut the music. Your heart decide. Want to give you the manliest music I could? Thank you. Because he loves Aladdin. I do. You believe in Jasmine. I do. You believe in the concept of Disney love? I do. Yeah. This is why we're polar opposites. This is why. But it's oh, that was a sabotage. Just, not even. That was a sabotage. This is going to be sick. Just to preface what's going on here and how Yusuf is here, tell them, tell them how you got here. Tell them what you know, please. I'm nervous no, right now. Don't nervous. I'm okay. nervous. This is what I do know. Do I look like a mean person? No. Okay. How did so you So when get you get it? a text from Lily mm -hmm. in out the blue mm -hmm. and it says, hey... I know you're on your spiritual journey. I'm interested to see if you want to come and be a part of my live. I'm like, all right, I'm down for that. And then, but just to let you know, it's going to be super raw and honest. And I'm going to ask basically anything. And I was like, all right, cool. But now as I'm here, I'm like, what is going on? I would just like to say, before I get mad hate comments, I did text you saying, is there anything you don't want me to ask you? And you said, no. So. Everything I'm asking right now is technically approved by you. 100%. Just so we put that out oh there, okay? God. Here's why I wanted you here. Let me explain to you. Okay. You're on this path, on this journey, where you're like, you want to be honest, you want to be open, no more BS, you're going to be, you know, straightforward. Uh -huh. You also did this video that I think is super dope with mm -hmm. Jesse. Okay. Now, for those of you that don't know, I don't know if you want to break it down. Jesse and you used to be friends, basically, mm -hmm. and then they had a little bump in the road. And Yusuf went to Jesse's house and they basically made a video talking about all the reasons their friendship kind of went through this rough patch, mm -hmm. right? And it was super honest. Or so the audience thinks. It was super odd. No, it wasn't. It was. Okay, dope, dope, dope. So I watched this and I was like, I would love to have a conversation like this with Yusuf because oh. I'm gonna be honest, I've known Yusuf for how long now? Um first time we met was, was Santa Monica. Yes, um, when we did that prank called uh, Why are you shaking? You're fine, you're fine. <laughs> it's the energy drink. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot energy. I forgot what it was called. It was um, when we pretended to break up. Yeah, in breaking public. up in public. Right, 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 yeah. right, yeah, yeah. Right, and I have known you for so long, and I feel like you've gone through lots of phases in life. All the time. You know, right? all the time. And so I feel like I've known Yusuf A, Yusuf B, Yusuf C, and I'm here. My goal is to learn the real Yusuf. Got it. Who Yusuf is. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. I'm not trying to disrespect you. I want to know about your growth with really honest questions. I love that. No, yeah, I, I really yeah. do. I know that here. I love right. it. And, and I there's no it. judges. I just want to. Poke holes in your what you're doing and know you who for you are. Because so are you guys down? Are you down? Yeah, when you mm -hmm. when we were texting about my journey yeah. before you asked me to do this mm -hmm. and I had said like I wanna, you know, come over and spend the night yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> you had said That wasn't the first time I got that text also, even before the journey started, I used to get texts like that all well, the time. Well this is my only chance. I had a reason for you to say it. <laughs> he started the journey to send me that text. <laughs> and really. then but I we had discussed how we wanted to have an honest heart to heart yeah. off the camera. Yeah, yeah. So if mm -hmm. we're having it here, mm -hmm. let's, let's do and it. And we'll probably have another one off the camera as well. When I spend the night. Yeah. 
All right. So first question yes. for you. Can you just for people that might not know? We're going right into right? it. We're going to yeah. get right into it. Okay. I'm out here. I might even cancel the rest of my day if Dang. I feel like it. Okay. This is how much this means. A to lot you. of girls have done that for me before, so. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the sass for later on. I'm gonna let you live. For okay, a second, okay, I'm being honest. Right? Oh, no. That means I can I like, say whatever all right, I want. No, no, that's it. I'm sure you're around lots of people who validate you very easily. Ooh. So don't worry. Okay, I'm not one of those people. So what's gonna happen is I want you to tell me about your journey. For people that don't know, okay. the audience watching, you're on this very special journey. Can you give us a brief kind of summary of what's okay. going on? Okay. Um, I've lived in LA since 2013, mm -hmm. and through my LA journey, I've had a lot of ups mm -hmm. and I've had a lot of downs. Okay. I've lived a vicious cycle of doing really well mm -hmm. and then doing really bad mm -hmm. and really well and really bad. Mm -hmm. And the more apartments I moved to, the more stuff I added to my collection of things I was hoarding in mm -hmm. my life to fill the holes that I was having, mm -hmm. the more I realized the vicious cycle wasn't ending. And I was supposed to move into a house with Alex and Aaron. The house fell through and then I had a decision right then and there. Do I stay in LA? and continue this endless cycle that I know is not gonna change. Mm -hmm. I know I'd be 31 years old in a couple of years and I'd still be going through the same ups and downs with my depression, my bipolar, I wasn't gonna get better. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I can sit here on my couch and cry about it like I have been mm -hmm. and relapse so many times mm -hmm. again, or I can leave my apartment, I can have no place to stay, I can have nothing but a backpack so there's nothing holding me down and I can be free to the world and what it has to offer. So in the simplest terms, that's what it is. So if I'm correct, so what it is is that you have only a backpack. Yes. You where do you sleep at night? Um, we've slept at a who's different. Who's we? Oh, I have a team now. Okay, who's your team? Me, Daniela, and Kimo. Okay. It was me and Daniela at first, but after we went to the Middle East, mm -hmm. we picked up Kimo. Okay. And now he's traveling with us. And like our last home that we slept at was Roman Atwood's house. Okay. Um, so you don't have a consistent home? No. You're staying in different places? The, the rule was supposed to be every night has to be a new place. Okay. Every night. Okay. But it's been changing so, a little So, and you've bit. frozen all your assets, all your money? I do have, mm -hmm. I do have access to a card. Okay. And the reason for what, that... What kind of card are we talking about the, here? The what kind of card? I don't know. It just, it's it, like just a black platinum card? No, no, no. You know? The reason being... The reason being... Like right now, my dog, Dollar, okay. who's not here with us, yeah. is in the hospital. Uh -huh. And I had to pay $2,500 yesterday mm -hmm. to take him into the emergency. Okay. I needed to do that. Okay. Also, another reason, um, every year during Ramadan, my mom donates to charity. Mm -hmm. And she just uh, put a huge charge uh, towards charity in the Middle East off mm -hmm. my card. So, your assets aren't frozen. You have a card. Yes. Okay, you have a card. Otherwise, how are you making money? How am I making money? Yeah. Because um, you've frozen all the AdSense income, right? No. Guy. So are you making money somehow? Through the journey? Because in your first video, you're like, I'm going to see if people will like pay me to do things or how I yeah, can get things. Yeah, yeah, so, and yeah. And so first things that, the first thing that I did was $100,000 going to a charity. Okay. Now we think, because we just started a charity called Project Butterfly. Mm -hmm. It's literally a foundation being built right now in London. Okay. We think that that's where the $100,000 should go. Okay. So we're holding that for that. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as the money that's mm -hmm. coming into the Fusi Tube channel, yes, money's still being made. Okay. But... I discussed this in an interview mm -hmm. that I'm going to be posting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The whole adpocalypse. Mm -hmm. I got hit like 90% on my Fusi Tube channel. Okay. And I talk about this tomorrow, and this is totally outside the point, but I'm this honest with it. Mm -hmm. I asked a friend of mine, mm -hmm. 1 million views in 24 hours, how much is that making you? Yeah. He showed me his AdSense, and can I be honest? Mm -hmm. or is it, be he, honest. He said. Just don't say the name. No, of course not. Yeah. And I saw mm -hmm. each million views in 24 hours was $8,000 to $12,000. Mm -hmm. Now, how much is the Fusi Tube channel making per million views in 24 hours? Mm -hmm. $457. And that's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. It's a blessing. Mm -hmm. But I know that there's a huge, my channel is like with ads right now, there's a huge shut off. Okay. A huge shut off. So my motivation through this, my, you know, what's keeping me going and everything, the last thing it has to do with the money. Okay. But as I'm doing this journey, I'm not going to shut off the money that's coming into the channel, wh wherever that may be used for. Okay, well, we're not going to dive into your analytics page yet. I'll maybe do that when the cameras are off and to see if this is actually okay. exact true or not. I'll let you guys know. But since your money and your AdSense is struggling and you out here struggling fam struggling. i have some money right wow. here all right and so i'm gonna ask you some honest questions okay. and what we're gonna do is we have a yusuf piggy bank right okay. here right Don't be scared and every question friend. you answer honestly i'm gonna give you ten dollars okay okay 
That was a good, like, me being honest right there, right? That was... I can't judge if you're being honest or not. Oh. We'll get to that, <laughs> right? You might be being honest. You might not be being honest. We'll see. They're okay. not going to help you. Don't look at them. Um, okay, but no, I'm going to ask the questions, okay? Okay. Don't be nervous. Okay. You're fine. Okay. You're good. Stop <laughs> trembling. Okay, question number one. If you haven't seen Yusuf's episodes, they're dope. I haven't seen all of them, I won't lie. I've only seen a few of them. They're like 20 minutes long. Yeah. Right? I, I can't do that. So... I really like the way they're edited. They're very cinematic. They're very cool. Thank you. And you edit them? So, long story short. Hold on. You edit them? <laughs> Let me get there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Long story I'm short. Money prep. Long story short. Yeah. yeah. When uh, we first started, mm -hmm. we outsourced somebody who was editing it for free. Okay. And every night, we would, uh, I would have the whole vision in my head, and as a director, I would tell him exactly how I wanted the flow. Yep, yep. Now, this was very hard because the time differences, because mm -hmm. the person was in the Middle East, yep. and by the time I got the story back, mm -hmm. if it didn't look how I wanted it to look, mm -hmm. and it didn't tell my story, there was nothing I could do about it. The video was live. Okay. So, at this point in time now, and it's been like this for a couple of episodes, we are 100% editing it. I sit down mm -hmm. first, I do the whole rough cut, I take out what I want, I tell the story, then I sit with Daniela again, we pull all nighter, and then she does like the effects and stuff, like the GFX, I'm not great at that. We are editing the videos 100%. Cool, so you are openly admitting that someone helps you edit and someone helps you shoot? Yeah. Yeah. Daniela's coming on the long okay. journey to cool. record. So that's openly acknowledged? Yeah. That's $10. Hey. Good, all right. Hey. You're gonna use that to buy me Chipotle after this. <laughs> all right, so let's, that, that was a, just a, a light question. Okay. That was light. Okay. 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 That was mad. We're gonna get deep now. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> you recently tweeted something. I oh, would like to read. Shoot. <laughs> I always get in trouble on Twitter. Yeah, you deleted all your tweets, so it's hard to stalk you. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So, you tweeted something. <sighs> yeah. You know, if you don't know, Yusuf has gone off YouTube, on YouTube, off YouTube, on YouTube, right? Yeah. I've been there for a lot of these conversations with him when he wasn't on YouTube as to why he quit and what he was gonna do. But we'll get to that. What I want to talk about is you tweeted something saying. This was a note to myself on my phone when I decided to come back on YouTube. Okay. Okay. And it said, I'm going to read it. It said, you got it. And this is a note from Yusuf to himself. Yep. You got to win their hearts back. You got to slow build. Take care of those who are there. Only accept love. Only accept happiness. Breathe. Relax. Do not fear. Do not panic. Do not let go. Everything is okay. Smile. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So it sounds like your journey is about you. Right? Like when you said your project initially, like I had so many superficial things. I dated girls for the wrong reason. I had a car, I had a motorcycle, mm -hmm. all these things. It was about your journey of happiness, mm -hmm. right? I want to ask you about the first part, which is you got to win their hearts back. Mm -hmm. Why is it important? To, first of all, who's they? Who's there? And why is it important to win people's hearts back if the journey is about you? So there is a group. This ain't yours yet, but <laughs> I'm going to put this over here. Okay. There mm -hmm. is a group of people, mm -hmm. and I don't know how large they are, okay. but there's a group of people who have been by my side mm -hmm. through every single phase. And you, you mean can fans. imagine. You mean yeah, fans or yeah, friends? Fans. Okay. You can imagine how much of a whiplash that may be. Okay. They've been there when I've started mornings with Fusi and mm -hmm. quit it, mm -hmm. gaming with Fusi and quit it, mm -hmm. YouTube Break 1, YouTube Break 2, mm -hmm. YouTube Break 3, Fusiville Channel, Pride Land mm -hmm. Music Video, Streamy Wins. Mm -hmm. They've been with me through it all. Yep. I've promised them that I'm going to chase my dream and never give up. Mm -hmm. So when I quit this last time, and I had, again, 100% in my mind thought I quit, yeah. I felt like I let so many of them down. Okay. So when I came back, I wanted to remind myself, and I, I, the one line that I said there is, take care of, be appreciative of who is there. Yeah. Because take normally care of in those the past, there, yeah. if a vlog wouldn't have hit a million views in 24 hours, mm -hmm. my ego would have been upset by it. Mm -hmm. Damn. People don't care about you. Something's happening. Right. But this time, when my channel leveled out at 300,000, 400,000 for a mm -hmm. second, I had to remind myself, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. So instead of being mad at that and looking, why am I don't have a million? Let me appreciate every single one of these 300, 400,000, mm -hmm. because that's what I didn't do last time. Mm -hmm. I didn't have gratitude for what I had. Okay. So I just wanted to nurture what I had and win their hearts back and show them that I'm trying to fight and I'm trying to continue the fight to remind them not to give up on their own battles okay. and stuff. So... <laughs> With this project, right? Yeah. I, I think you're growing a lot as a person. Uh huh. You do have some. I'm just gonna help you. Sorry, I didn't know that was. It. <laughs> Sorry. Is it gone? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm capable. Okay. Okay. So on this journey, mm -hmm. what? Let me ask you a question. What val? What will validate you? What makes you feel validated? What validates me? Yeah. Well, just in a word or two, what validates you? Now. Am I giving you the cliche answer? Or no, the... I want the honest answer. I don't want the cliche. If, it's, if it sounds cliche and it's honest, I don't care. I just want honest. If you say it's not views, you're saying it's not the money, what validates you on this current journey you're on? So, 
what used to validate me mm-hmm. was numbers, yeah. tweets. Yeah. Like when I tweeted mm-hmm. and I got a lot of interaction, yeah. that filled a void in me. And it's okay. been doing that for years. Okay. So a lot of interaction, mm-hmm. just as people you know, fall into the mess of social media, yeah. Instagram likes, mm-hmm. views, yeah. support, mm-hmm. and positive feedback. Okay. When I got positive feedback, I felt good. Okay. I did something. I, I won their approval, and I was happy. What about now? What validates you now? Not what validates me now. What I'm trying to work towards validating me okay. is none of that, mm-hmm. but what I feel in myself each and every day. Regardless mm-hmm. of my approval rating, mm-hmm. what people think about me, mm-hmm. my views, how much money I'm making, or how hot I am in the YouTube community right now. So even if you don't, quote, win their hearts back, mm-hmm. you will still feel validated. That's what I'm working towards, That's yes. That's what you're working towards. That's what I'm working towards. And I tell my like team every day we have heart to heart. Okay. And that's what I'm working towards. So is your goal, you mentioned earlier, your goal is to appreciate those 3,000, 4,100 people that are there, mm-hmm. right? So how do you know when you've accomplished that goal? So this is the thing I always ask people, right? I always ask people... What's your goal? And a lot of times, creators, I'm going to be really honest, creators give these really cliche answers, right? And I've been guilty of doing this in the past as well. Uh My goal is to make people happy. I just want to impact you. Of course we want to do that, but that's not a goal Mm -hmm. because how do you know you've accomplished that goal? How many people is enough happy people? How many people is enough impacted people? Of course, we always have, goals have to be measurable. So when will you feel like, oh, I've accomplished what I want to accomplish? Well, I, I feel with this project, I already have. You feel like you've already accomplished? Yeah, Okay. every day because we just did a, a meet and greet in Ohio, right? Mm-hmm. We tweeted out a random location, the police mm-hmm. shut it down, yep. and the people who saw my tweet got to move to a new location. Mm-hmm. Now, when I went there with the team, it wasn't, the play and my intention wasn't, let me show everybody how hot I am and how wanted mm-hmm. I am. Let me cause a ruckus in this city and mm-hmm. dip. I see that happen all the time. That's okay. not what I was doing. I got to the meet and greet, they started going crazy. I said, stop. Mm-hmm. I said, I do not want to take a picture right now because what I want to do is spend time with you guys. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just sit down and chill. So you feel like you've accomplished what you want to accomplish? Because when people are coming up, the people who talk to me, the people who have uh, Project Butterfly and Team Butterfly, like, things and support, Uh I feel like um, they're there and that's what matters. Okay, but what if they all go away? Uh, It it, it would be hard. It would be very hard, but I promised myself and I talked about this in the interview too, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. Okay. So this is this is the, okay. This is the breakdown of Yusuf and I's relationship, right? I have heard Yusuf quit YouTube one, two, maybe three times, right? More. Maybe maybe more. Okay. And the last time he quit YouTube, I, I went over to Alex's house and I said, mm-hmm. "Talk to him." I think it was your birthday. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Dude, what the f are you doing? You keep quitting YouTube." And you said to me, and I quote, uh-huh. "I finally discovered YouTube's not for me. I'm not gonna go back to YouTube because it doesn't make me happy. Mm-hmm. I want to try different things. I maybe want to try being mm-hmm. like a fitness person. Maybe I want to try traveling stuff. I just am not going back to YouTube." And you said something that really impressed me, which was, I keep telling myself that it's because of hate comments, it's because of the content I'm making, that's why I keep going back and being unhappy, but it's not. I just don't enjoy YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, Yusuf is honest with himself. <laughs> he knows what's up. And then, lo and behold, one and a half weeks later, I saw a YouTube video. And it wasn't just a YouTube video. It was called, Dear YouTube, You Need to See This. And I literally wanted to jump out my goddamn window because I was so annoyed at you mm-hmm. because you're never consistent in what you say. Yeah. So you're saying with this project, yeah. even if no one supports your mm-hmm. project, even if you get very little views, mm-hmm. no matter what happens, you are not going to leave YouTube again. I'm not saying I'm not going to leave YouTube again okay. because I, I can't even predict that far. So but what a I, minute ago you said you're not going to quit. So I'm not going to quit on this journey. Quit and YouTube are different. Yeah, because okay. so I, I don't. Define what my quit is. Define what not. Define what quit is then. Well, he, let me let me yeah. backtrack a second. Okay, sure. And that time don't you sweat. Me, You're good. You're that doing time great. you saw me on my birthday. Yes. I do want to mention. Uh huh. I didn't see you ever again after that. You saw me at my show. Yeah. Yeah. Which was recent. Yeah. Now, and I texted so you this. Is me and her got into this again. little thing through texting. <laughs> yeah. Where she asked me that. She yeah. was like, "Yo, where are your intentions here and this?" Mm-hmm. And what I respectfully told her was. I respect where you're coming from, from what you saw as an outsider. Yep. I, last time I saw you, hey, Lily, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I need to find my happiness. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, I'm back on YouTube. Yep. But somebody who was there, and I told you this, was who hum- spent every humble. day with me, was Humble yep. the Poet. Mm-hmm. Now, he nursed me every day. Mm-hmm. We talked on the phone for hours. Mm-hmm. He hung out with me. He talked to me about life. Uh, and I was he- wondering why he was annoyed every single day. <laughs> <laughs> and he really helped me reach a new place, mm-hmm. right? And he always let me know, if you need to come back to YouTube, do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you watch those vlogs that I posted Mm -hmm. on Dosa Fusi, what I said in those vlogs was, me coming back this time is not for you. 
I pointed to the audience that it's not for you. I said it's for me. Mm-hmm. I said for years I've had an outlet to voice my opinions, my frustrations, mm-hmm. and talk, deal with my depression. Mm-hmm. I need that back. Okay. So whether you're here to ride with me or not, that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So I started that on Dosa Fusi. Mm-hmm. And then, unexpectedly, this journey came about, mm-hmm. and I came back to Fusi. So too. I just want you, we're going to wrap up this segment right here. Okay. I'm just going to leave you with a final thought, which is the contradiction of I need to win their hearts back, and uh-huh. this is not for you, it's for me. Because those are two opposite sentences. No, because like I, I'm really connected to the people who are there for uh-huh. this, right? Yeah. And although why I'm creating is for me, mm-hmm. I still know who's a part of it because mm-hmm. they're a part of it more than even I am. They're okay. invested in me. They're invested in the journey. They're, they're not in part of it more than you are. You're part of it more than they are. True. Okay. But cut the BS. No, I care for them a lot, okay. and I'm not just BSing. And yeah. the thing with me, I believe you and care I'll for them. call other yeah. creators out on mm-hmm. this. I felt like I've always, if mm-hmm. there's anybody invested in his audience, mm-hmm. it's me, one hundred percent. So whether they're what like outside of me creating for myself, whether they're haters Who or else? not. Name another person in your life you're invested in. That's not a fan. What do you mean invested in? Any other person that you're emotionally invested in. Emotionally? Like the way you're invested in your fans, you care about them. Uh Name someone who's not a fan that you're invested in. Family member, friend, doesn't matter, anyone. My dogs. Okay, someone that talks. Your mom? Um, You're really close with your mom. Yeah, we talk every day. So you're invested in your mom, right? What what characterizes investment? You're honest with people? That would be one thing, right? If you're Uh invested in people, you're honest with them, you care about them, right? Uh Great, that's a perfect segue to clickbait. Which is the most dishonest thing a creator can do. That's but true. we'll talk Not about that. True. We'll talk about Not that. True. We'll put a pin in that. Okay. And we'll talk about Ooh. that in a second. Because we're gonna take a break from the heat. Spicy. And we're gonna ask answer Where's two my questions. Money? Oh, okay. I'm gonna give you five dollars for that because there was a contradiction in your answer you, which is i want to win for, their hearts back if you look for a contradiction for you're going to find a I'm contradiction i'm not looking for a contradiction i'm simply looking at the facts laid out in front of me. why are you looking for the fault in my stars i'm boo you have to have stars for me to have fine faults first okay calm down okay so two questions from the audience the only reason i'm sassing you is because <laughs> you're trying to get flirtatious with me boo. no i'm not okay yes you are and you need to buy me I you showed up. You drinking my drinks right now? Yo, Come the F I, down. If I was, I was, I would be trying to play footsie if I was trying to flirt. I'm not. Your knees can't even reach under the I'm table. That's why you're all. not. Anyways, okay. <laughs> Two questions from Twitter, and yes. so my audience, they're they're hella. hella are they watching Twitter. right now? Are they like there? I, I think they're watching. They're watching. I think oh, they're liking man. it. So we have two questions from Twitter. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Are it's ready gonna be on a lighter note, right? <clears throat> Nothing here's on the night. Team Super Mumbai, sorry, my boy. Who of course is gonna ask the most inappropriate questions. Oh man. Question number one. I think it's. For both of us, actually. Okay. Okay? But you're going to have to answer first. Okay? It's going to be, can you let us know if y'all fell for each other at some point? You first. Me first? You first. Okay. Yeah, it's my live stream. I make you sure really want me to answer this yes. right now in front yes. of everybody who's in this room yes, and absolutely. them right yep. now? Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. There was a time. Did you get that lip quiver? Can we zoom in on that lip quiver? There was a time. Yes. Where, when the whole Yuli was happening and everything happened. That's always happening, yes. I did to uh-huh. myself mm-hmm. envisioned what it would be like to be in a relationship with okay. you. And, you know, so many people kept saying, you guys are such a good match, you're mm-hmm. this and this. Mm-hmm. And I know we're different. Mm-hmm. But I, in my head, tried to envision, if I let you into my world that I let girls into, there's a whole other side That crowded me. world? No, 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 no. It's very limited. Uh-huh. So when I let a girl in, I let her in. Yep. Now, you saw this side to me, mm-hmm. but we've never connected on a spiritual level, I feel, mm-hmm. no matter how good our friendship got. Mm-hmm. And I asked myself, if I did let her into that world and had, like, intimate nights, straight up, would she feel something for me? And I had those thoughts. So that's as honest as it could get right there. So as much as you might think, mm-hmm. like, how much it was playing, nah, I was like, there were times where I, I really, like, I thought about it. I've even talked to friends about it. Now, did you're I... You're talking... Which friend? Mutual friend? Yeah. Now, did the I... Now, did I ever think that you would be interested or anything in me? Nah. And that's why it's, it was never, it was just one of those things, you know? Interesting. Yeah. And so, there you have it. Most of the fanfic on the internet, Yusuf wrote <laughs> about us. <laughs> there you have it. Um, if I was to answer this question, you know, I'll be honest. I agree. I, I always thought, like, yo, Yusuf is, I like how he's ambitious. Those, the times when you were like, I got three channels, I'm ambitious, I have these goals. I was really like, I'm attracted to this hustle in you. Mm-hmm. But that was never consistent. And that was such a big problem. Not even romantically, I mean, he's a friend. I like to be around, if I'm really honest, I like to be around people who 
have a certain energy. 100%. And I always felt like your energy was never consistent in mm -hmm. that regard. It was always like, okay, you said this changed again. Okay, you said someone else now. And I, just for my own mental sanity, need to be around people that consistently have a positive energy, right? There was times, of course, when we were shooting videos, this mother effort would write scripts where he's like, okay, so then we're going to be in bed, we're going to get married. When I was like up against this chest and these abs, where I was like, yo, yo, maybe, maybe Yusuf and I should like uh, do some really? BTS of our own. But, <laughs> but, again, spiritually, I was like, no, I would kill this mother effort yeah. if I'm honest. I, I, like, I, I, I would that kill too. you. And you know? that's why I never... I respected whenever I felt like I know you, you're the kind of person you are and you mm -hmm. need that kind of energy. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm on the path to do right mm -hmm. now. So for me to 25 days right now on this journey, 26 today, mm -hmm. my energy has been great. My drive has been great. Mm -hmm. My hunger has been back because I found my purpose. I'm yeah. proud of myself. Maybe 365 days from now when mm -hmm. you've been like this for a year, uh -huh. we can shoot a video. You can write something where we're in bed together. And uh -huh. I don't know, maybe we'll talk about pop You know what we'll pissed see. me off about that, okay, by yeah, the way? Yeah. Sorry if we're going long. Yeah, but no, it's okay. There was one time. Mm -hmm where I had a video planned where me and you were going to kiss. And I knew, <laughs> and I knew we yes. were going to shatter. My life is so hard. Please listen to the story. We were going to shatter everything, and I was so excited. But if I remember... To win people's hearts back. It was way before yeah, that. Yeah. But if I remember correctly, uh -huh. that was right when, right when I was going to do it, you and Swoozy did it. And I sat there mm -hmm. like, wow, really? Because everybody knows Basically you, and, you and Swoozy is not real. But me and you, there was a chance. And Let me just take all this money out this jar right now. Let me just take all this money, take this drink back right now. Hold uh, on. What you mean? No, don't take my love for your abs if there was a chance. Uh, I ain't okay. even got abs right now. Listen, moral of the story is in the same week, Susie and Yusuf both on the same day were like, I want to do a video where I kiss you. And Susie just messaged me first. Okay. And I was like, I'm not going to do that with both of you guys in the same week. The hell? I know. And then so, Dom, you ended up kissing and Dom. And he was so mad. But we'll, we'll talk. I'm actually going to put a note on my paper about this you can't look at what it is not looking in the history of our friendship uh -huh. <clears throat> i think your answer is a little bit soft than what the truth is because true or false that's all i want is a true or uh -huh. false i want no explanation, no explanation around it okay, okay just let me true hear or false. It. Let me hear a multiple true. okay so you have multiple times gotten upset if another guy has talked to you true okay multiple times true great moving on second question all right. Um, by the way, I'm so sorry. That question was from Team Super OG, aka uh, Amu. It wasn't, uh, sorry. Sorry's question is now. Team Super Mumbai, this is good, right? And we're not going to name any names. Okay, okay. okay. That's my one rule. Okay. Another I, reason I why I can't date you, because if we break up, I know you're going to be subtweeting about me, and I'm not about that mother um, effing life. Okay. Work on that. Right. Okay. This is the question. Yeah. All right. Did, and don't mention names, because okay. we'll let people assume, did Lily and your ex have some type of tension? I'll answer after you answer. I really don't want to talk about her right now. Um, okay, I can answer if you don't want to. Okay, what do you have okay, to say? Okay, the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> Anytime you've dated anyone, I have, I actually really believe in girl love, so I don't know if you will call, I'm really nice to everyone you've dated, mm -hmm. that I know of, or anyone that anyone's dated. Even though online people try to be like, oh, but no, you supposed to be for Lily, yada, yada. I've never had problems with anyone. No, I know you haven't, but yeah. there if have been, other people have with me, there have been times I've had to explain to yeah. to girls like they ask like like even one girl I talked to years ago and we recently started talking and she mm -hmm. was like, "Yo, but you and Lily." Yeah, yeah. And I would have to. But you know why that is, right? Yeah. Why? Because of what we showed or what I showed. Correct. Yeah. Not we, you. All because right. there was an instance uh -huh. where you were with your girlfriend uh -huh. and I was in the room. And I was questioning this so hard where I was like, why is he doing this? What I did I do? Punch him. You right in front of your girlfriend came up to me and you started vlogging with me. You're like, yo, she still makes me nervous. You know, and I was like, why are you doing this in front of your girlfriend when she's obviously going to feel jealous? That, that, that might have been. And it's okay. We all make mistakes. That was a mistake. This is not pointing things. You yeah, know, that was a mistake. Back. But I'm saying if your girlfriend ever did feel jealous, they're probably justified in doing it. Yeah, that. yeah. That was a mistake. And I, my heart goes out to. Her All the people that have Yusuf blocked, our hearts <laughs> go out to you. This live stream is dedicated to you. Maybe this jar will also go to you. For that honesty, I'm going to give you five more dollars. Uh, okay, we're going to get back. Those were light questions. Okay. Those were light. I, I still want this deficit right okay. now. Okay. We're going to go into more questions. Just yes or no. How red are my cheeks right now? I don't know. You're looking like Kyle when he's out in the sun. You're looking <laughs> hella white person sunburned right now. Okay, yes or no? Okay. Have I, no, I don't want you to be stressed. No, this I'm liking a, it. Look at my smile. Good. 
good. It's like it's like a it's like a detox of because more than anything, what you should be gathering is that I've done my research. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes or no question, no explanation, just yes or no. Have you changed since the first time I met you? Oh yeah, change every day. Okay, great, perfect. Because you also tweeted saying that you don't change people's perception of you changes. No, see, see, see. There's so many. There's so many things here, like mm-hmm. fine lines between. We change. Mm-hmm. Everybody changes all the time. But what I say about change, whenever people, I'm people always view me as an old Yusuf and a new Yusuf. Mm-hmm. That's got, just something people say to creators, which is dumb. And I got tired of that yeah, yeah. because I was like, no, mm-hmm. stop. There is no old Yusuf. There is no new Yusuf mm-hmm. because. This we've created me being yeah. in charge of it with my audience, and the reason they're like happy with this, oh yeah, we like Yusuf again, mm-hmm. is because I've villainized myself from the past mm-hmm. and made myself, my past version of myself, be a most horrible person. Mm-hmm. But when I think about the past version of myself, like the one who had just met you, mm-hmm. the one who was overweight and everything, mm-hmm. I always had the same good intentions. Mm-hmm. I always had a pure heart, a kind heart. Mm-hmm. Now people might not have seen that in me based on how they perceived me. Mm-hmm. So now, and also based on how you acted. But I know myself even through those times. Okay behind the persona of who I was for the internet, mm-hmm. who Yusuf was, okay. not Fusi, okay. not the videos. So, great, great. So, I also agree. I think everyone changes. I hate when people comment saying, yo, old Lily, new Lily, old Yusuf, because everyone changes. Even the person that writes that comment also changes. You have to change because that's how you grow. Uh-huh. Change and growth, inevitable, necessary, right? Mm-hmm. There's a few things that I feel like you've said contradictory things to me okay. and I'd like to ask you about. Okay. First time I came to your apartment, <clears throat> yes. when we lived right beside each other and never saw each other, yeah. was... You were getting your tattoo removed. Yeah. Yes. Oh, great. Yes. I like this. Yeah. Okay. You were getting your tattoo removed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, why are you going through so many of these operation things to get your tattoo removed? Yeah. And you said to me, and I hope you don't mind me repeating this, you said to me saying, it's not my choice. I don't even care that I have a tattoo. I don't mind the tattoo. I just have to get it removed because it's not my choice. But then I went home and saw a post that was like, I regret getting the tattoo. It's not who I am. And it was just so contradictory to what you said to me in person. Mm-hmm. And now, can I just see your arms? Yeah. Okay. Now, you got a page of tattoos removed and you got all of these tattoos. Yeah. I don't think tattoos are a big deal at all. But you, for some reason, in your brain convinced yourself mm-hmm. that you need to be one way, even though you don't actually believe in that way. 100%. Why? So, when I started Yusuf, mm-hmm. I was like, I, I created Muslim content, yeah. like content that represented Islam. Yeah. And I represented content for Middle Easterns. Okay. Now, I dressed up as my mom, dad, mm-hmm. did the whole tick, 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 yeah. tick, tick on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Now, because of this, that audience saw me a certain way, yeah. and I had a standard to live up to. Okay. So I lived In up. In your brain. Yeah, and for me feeling like I was doing the right thing. Because okay. there was a time where I finally started like getting my viral hits, doing my Middle Eastern stuff, where mm-hmm. I was like, dang, there's people back home watching me. I need to represent. Mm-hmm. So now, as I'm, and yo, double life on YouTube, mm-hmm. don't get me started. Yeah. Don't get me started with how many YouTubers are one way for the camera and one way for another. Of course. So me doing that, mm-hmm. it was out of a good intention because mm-hmm. I was representing a religion mm-hmm. and a culture. Mm-hmm. So as I was doing that, I was also growing as a person. Mm-hmm. So when I got my tattoo when I moved to LA, I wasn't ready for that in my life at that time. Okay. I was still scared of judgment. Judgment of my audience, judgment of my mother. Mm-hmm. Had a severe panic attack when I got the tattoo, scrubbed it off for hours in the shower, mm-hmm. cried every night, went to therapy, mm-hmm. gained 49 pounds, mm-hmm. was depressed because I thought my life was over. Because mm-hmm. in my head, whenever somebody saw that, they're no longer going to see Yusuf that they supported. They're going to think I got lost in the sauce. Mm-hmm. Started getting my tattoo removed. Through therapy and through my removal process, I grew up. Mm-hmm. And I learned that, no, Yusuf, if you want to do something, you're going to do it for you regardless of what others may see. Mm-hmm. So here's what happened in my YouTube career. As I started being more me, because I'm not going to lie, while I was making those videos representing Islam and doing the Middle Eastern Mm -hmm. stuff, I was doing stuff behind the scenes all the time. 100%. That was actually a segue into my second I was still still living a double life. I was still going out and partying. I was still drinking. I was Mm -hmm. still doing stuff with girls. I just didn't show them that. In fact, when we used to take pictures, we had to orchestra. I specifically remember at a house party, me and you and a whole bunch of YouTubers, and you made us move all the alcohol from behind the picture. Yeah. And I was like, Yusuf, what are you doing, dog? And like, so, yeah. so what, it, what actually ended up happening was people thought I changed, mm-hmm. but all I really started doing was being more true to myself. Mm-hmm. As I started being more true to myself, people thought I got lost. So they're, they cha- they're like, dang, mm-hmm. LA changed him, fame changed him, money right. changed him, but I was just becoming more me. So when I got this tattoo now, it was me as an adult ready to make my own decisions, okay. to make my own faults, and to say, this is what I believe in. I respect your beliefs. This is me. 
And I got to, through that, talk to my mom about it. Mm -hmm. And then my mom, like, who I thought would disown me, is my biggest supporter. Mm -hmm. And she trusts me because she knows this does not define the love or who her child is. So this is just me being ready to accept my own decisions. I'm going to give you $10 for that answer. Big up yourself. $10. That's all, all going to go towards taking me out to dinner. Okay, what question gets me a kiss? <clears throat> None of them. Anyways, moving on. So kind here's fun the is thing, that? right? Here's the thing. <clears throat> I feel, and this is where I might get a little heated because this is where I am very passionate about this subject. Okay. okay? I'm going to read you three tweets from you. Oh, dang it. Okay? Delete three my Twitter. No, you've already done that many times. You're not going to do it this time because I have the receipts right okay. here. Right? Three tweets from you. Yeah. All right? <clears throat> and they go in order. Okay? So the first one I'm going to read is from back in the day. Okay. Cool? How'd tweet number one. That? I'm changing the way I YouTube. No longer am I making content for views. No more need for quick satisfaction from numbers. The next tweet was, I used to get a million views from crap content with clickbaited title and thumbnails. It's time to change all that and begin filmmaking. Mm -hmm. About two, three weeks later, our titles and thumbnails do not represent how powerful our content is. It's simply us having to play the game to change the game. So essentially, from an, I'm just going to call it how I, I see it, okay. and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. You were making content with honest titles and saying, I'm a filmmaker, I'm not doing the clickbait crap anymore, I'm above that, mm -hmm. my content speaks for itself. Maybe you weren't getting as many views. As you mentioned, your views weren't... Mm -hmm. I, I, can, I can see the receipts online. No, yeah, I, okay. the receipts are when okay, we started the let me journey. Finish, let me finish. And then you're like, yo, actually clickbait thumbnails and titles are just me playing the game to change the game. And so I need to do that for people to now see this awesome stuff I'm making through filmmaking. And so now, yeah, I am going to clickbait. Why the contradiction? Why the change? Okay. Why before were you okay not clickbaiting, and then why okay. did you start clickbaiting? First of again? all, yeah. And this is two friends. I'm not attacking. Oh, no, I know this is okay. a chance for me to address yes, this because yes. this is a big topic for me too. Yes, please. So first of all, YouTube right now mm -hmm. in this day and age, depending on your audience, is built on clickbait. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I say that? For years that I've done this, I posted videos that weren't clickbait, and I posted videos that are clickbait. Mm -hmm. I know what the audience clicks on, mm -hmm. and I feel like the people who complain about clickbait, the viewers, mm -hmm. are the people who only click on clickbait, mm -hmm. what I found. Yep. Now, I, ha I have a predominantly male audience. I okay. do have a female support group, mm -hmm. but a predominantly male audience, their clicks and their like reception towards videos are different, mm -hmm. so it's tailored to a different way. Okay. Now. When I started the journey and I said, like, I'm going to be, a, you know, the filmmaker mm -hmm. for the first 15 days, mm -hmm. me not capitalizing my titles, no exclamation points, mm -hmm. no nothing, a million views each day. And for six days in a row, two million views, mm -hmm. not clickbait, just the content. Now you have times where let's say I post whatever people think a clickbait title is on this journey, right? Here's what I feel. Mm -hmm. I feel like now that I support my content and I know it's quality, mm -hmm. so I know if I do get them to click, mm -hmm. it ain't a waste of their time. Mm -hmm. This is quality content that you need to see. Mm -hmm. Now, how am I going to target young Jake Paul fans? Mm -hmm. Like I met Jake Paul fans in Ohio. Hey, are you guys watching the journey? No, nah, we're not, but it's every day, bro. Mm -hmm. How am I going to get them to elevate? Mm -hmm. If I have to play the game mm -hmm. and maneuver and I'm bringing them in to get them to watch the video, I'm going to do that mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, this is a business mm -hmm. and I have to play that and I feel like my content deserves to be seen. Mm -hmm. But when I used to stuff in the past, mm -hmm. clickbait on like Dosa Fusi, mm -hmm. but I know all I did, like a lot of YouTubers to stay at home and create a vlog all day. Mm -hmm. why, why, what am I doing to that kid? Why am I wasting 13 minutes of their day to come watch my mm -hmm. video? Wasn't worth it. That's clickbait. Clickbait to me is not only the title and thumbnail, it's the content you're uploading in there. Okay, so my question to you would be, if you're saying for Joseph Fusi, when I used to have, you know, trash content, I used to, I don't want to waste 13 minutes someone's someone. Not day. all trash, I'm not all. I'm just saying, yeah. for example, if it was trash, you're saying, I don't want to waste your time watching this content. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that a Jake Paul fan gives an F about your journey and needs to see your content? By no means do I feel like they need to. Yeah. But I feel like me believing in the content I'm mm -hmm. producing now, mm -hmm. I want them to care because okay. if I have a chance to get little children. But if you want them to care, doesn't that contradict your journey of it being for you? No, 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 no. Because through this journey, I started Project Butterfly and I have a charity. I now have, there are operations that we're going to run where I do feel like we're going to make positive influence and positive change. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm building a team around that. I'm circulating a team around that. I'm creating a charity. Mm -hmm. This is all stuff that's happening through, like, throughout what we're doing. So why do I feel like that kid needs to? That kid doesn't mm -hmm. by any means. He can live his own life. But if I have the power mm -hmm. to get a kid like that to join the journey in Team Butterfly and believe in positivity and love and the change we're going to do for the world, by all means and any means necessary. 
Now, I also feel like clickbait, if you want to be, um, it's not even, it's not even clickbait. First of all, I, I, I'm sick of clickbait because I feel like, look on YouTube, everything is clickbait. Not everything. Not everything, but like, for example, your vlogs, right? How many views your vlogs get a day? Not a lot. Not a lot. And yeah. do you ever clickbait? Not really. Not really. Yeah. You don't, right? Now, if you wanted mm -hmm. to be a part of that group mm -hmm. that gets a million views a day, mm -hmm. as sad as it sounds, you have to, you have to clickbait. Now, if your quality mm -hmm. is worth bringing them in, then bring them in. Mm -hmm. Do I want my content to be seen right now? Yes, because I believe in the message. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not wasting their time. I know I'm not spending half my blog selling merch. I'm not trying to get them but, to buy a song. But don't you don't, but here's the thing, right? I just really would, as your friend, would want you to think that if your journey is all about, I'm doing this for me and I want to put out a good message, why the F do you care if that is 100,000 people or a million people and why do you need to clickbait to get into that group of a million? Because when I put out vlogs, mm -hmm. right, I literally could be in my house all day working and I'll put out that vlog. I don't clickbait. And I'm not saying I'm right and you're wrong, we're just different and mm -hmm. that's fine. But here's the thing with clickbait, right? Is as someone like me, and maybe I'm maybe the flaws in me, mm -hmm. I don't know, but I'm just telling you how I feel is that you clickbaiting actually makes my job harder. Because I go into meetings trying to make something of YouTube and all they can think of is like, oh, so like you vlog, right? So like you you guys eat stuff online and then you you guys do pranks and you do stupid crap with your friends. And that's what people think YouTube is. Right? And so now creators like the Ryans and the Dietrichs and like, I don't even want to mention my name because I think they're better than me. They are now lost in a sea of, I did this stupid crap or I broke this part of me or like I dissed this person. And so actually for creators like us, you in a way, whether you care or not is I guess your choice, you actually make our jobs harder where we feel like, no, we all have to be part of this little crew then to also clickbait. So if you're so obsessed with like, I have the power to make someone watch my vlog and change the way they think because I'm positive, shouldn't you think I have the power to change the game and not clickbait and actually make my content speak for itself? First off, in any industry, mm -hmm. like let's say Kendrick Lamar, a conscious yeah. rapper, mm -hmm. he can't be mad that Waka Flocka Ding Dong comes out with a song like and goes platinum. 100%. It's part of the game. Sure. Now, he can't sit there and be like, y'all are ruining the game for me. I can't open these kids' mind. Mm -hmm. He understands this is a game. Mm -hmm. It's a doggy -dog, dog world, and people are willing to do whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They're willing to steal content. They're willing to clickbait. They're willing to be unoriginal, whatever it may be. That happens in any industry. Mm -hmm. BuzzFeed was created on clickbait. Mm -hmm. You know how many times I got clickbaited by a BuzzFeed article? Mm -hmm. CNN clickbaits night and day. Why are these news channels mm -hmm. trying to clickbait for our attention? Mm -hmm. There was recently a Muslim girl who was killed mm -hmm. that they clickbaited the hell out of me to click that title. It's everywhere. It's in our media. It's everything. And it comes down to a point like, yeah, but I that doesn't make it respectable. No, 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 because we, we, I'm not, like, right now, I stand by my content as well, some of the best content on YouTube right now, mm -hmm. and I will stand by that. Okay. And if my clickbait, I would love for you to show me an example where you're like, this is unacceptable to get your viewers to watch, because, like, I just titled the video, I stole Roman and Atwood's you car. you did steal it, and you stole got his mad car. Because, yeah, I will agree there's some instances of clickbait where it's, people just like saying, this is stupid, if the thing actually happens in yeah. the video, it's not. Am I stupid. using women? Am I using breasts? Am I pretending that a ghost molests me at night, like 90% of YouTubers right now, to get views? Nah. I'm creating. But you're doing other things. No, yeah. what? What am I doing? You need to watch this video. I'm going to have to delete this video. Dear YouTube, you need to see this. If the journey's for you, Yo, why does YouTube need to see it? Because I believe in the content and I want it to be seen. So then, my, what I would tell you as a friend, uh -huh. you can disagree with me, is that you got to say the journey is about me, but it's about you seeing my journey as well. Well, or else you wouldn't be saying you need to play the game to change the game. You wouldn't be saying it's a business. You, you got to acknowledge. This is the thing. Like, I feel like YouTubers feel pressured to say cliche things. right? They feel pressured to be like, of course the journey is about me. Look, but no, because, it's a business. You said. Yeah, but, you but play the game it, it's what game. intention do you have going into that business? I know a lot of people who their business right now, the reason they want to get views is because they know a lot of views means more AdSense. Mm -hmm. That's not my intention. Okay. Me playing the business right now is knowing the more people I get is the more people I can get to be a part of my charity and the more change we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing that. I'm playing that in a huge way, but ah, uh, where was I? I had something. You, I'm sure you did. Uh, Damn. Um, um, you can call this vlog the time I got amnesia. Damn it. Dang it. There was something I wanted uh, to say in regards to that. But um, well, listen. I understand as a creator, there's people that's gonna use clickbait. I'm not sitting here being salty about it. I can't control that. Mm -hmm. And you're right. It's dumb for me to be like, oh, I'm mad as a creator. I'm not getting views because this person doesn't know. I'm not about to do that. 
But all I'm saying is that if you are so adamant that your journey is about you mm -hmm. and you're not doing it for other people, then there should not be a need for clickbait. That is the deepest level of yourself to understand. Or if it is about getting views, you say, yes, the journey is about me, but it is important to me that people see this journey. So for sometimes I have an amazing, amazing, amazing video yeah. and I know it's amazing, mm -hmm. but I know if I title it mm -hmm. what it is, then it's not gonna, like I said, be seen. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's important enough to be seen. I know that sounds holier than thou, but I truly do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the more eyes, the more change. Mm -hmm. Now, had I put a regular title like I did, I put mm -hmm. uh, giving back helps me through my depression. Yep. And I gave back to uh, workers in Qatar mm -hmm. who are fasting. Mm -hmm low views right and that's fine uh -huh. but if i had if i felt like it was worthy to be seen and i titled it dear youtube you need to see this and there were more eyes on it by all means it was still the best video i produced and great I, content you know what i think the key is and this is how i'll wrap this up i think the key is not to be validated by who how many people watch it but if you believe in it so much it does not matter if one person sees it 10 people see it or yeah it doesn't it. but it's also like this is the industry like you can look at how the rock promotes his movie you can't compare how he promotes his movie towards how leonardo dicaprio promotes his movie they're going to promote their movies in different ways now leonardo dicaprio might be like man look at this guy posting these instagram videos and making fun with kevin hart and doing these tours while leo's like i'm an actor but i believe in my art i don't misleading. have to do this that promo's not misleading though it's promoting they're selling themselves promoting yourself is different than saying you need to see this video, YouTube, because this is gonna get deleted. What I feel like, what I feel like to the you, the Rock is not saying, "Yo, Baywatch is gonna self-destruct in one day if you don't watch it in theaters." The Fine right Bros now. have done that all the well, time. I, the Fine Bros aren't here right now. The Fine Bros aren't. I dropped that name and I apologize. That's okay. They're not here right now. You're here. Okay, but I'm here's what I want to say to you. Here's what I want to say to you. Here's what I want to say to you. I'm just calling out your BS. And here's what I want to say to you. The journey's for you. If it's actually also about getting. But here's what I want to say to you, and this goes to anything that you do, and I've learned this when I was like young on YouTube, mm -hmm. don't get mad at somebody for doing something that works just because you're not yeah. willing to do it. And I'm not mad. Oh, you know what I, mean? I am? I'm being a friend that's being like, yo, you're contradicting yourself. No, 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 no. BS. no, no, no. If and that's I what I'm saying. Mad, I could put up a vlog right now with clickbait. Yeah, you could. That's what I'm saying. That. But that's not my issue. I'm completely fine getting 200,000 views on my vlogs. I'm content. I have a party if my vlog hits 200,000. like, yo, damn straight. And that's I'm gonna awesome. I'm going to get when I order Chipotle today because I'm out there from Bali. That's, that's awesome. That's what I say. But, but I'm saying for you, if your journey is about so being authentic, then have the guts to say it's also about you watching my journey. It's not just about me putting my story I do there. say that in it the episodes. I tell them that they're the wings that make it fly, and I understand. Why okay, is it for the them? It's supposed to be for you. The wings that make it fly is a very Tumblr effing way of saying it's also a business and I need you. No, I don't because need you. Because do. I'm not doing it because my channel is shot down on AdSense right now anyway. And me promoting it doesn't you, have to deal. You wouldn't with clickbait. Not true. It is not true. true. Okay, so not the next true. episode you have or the next week, I dare you not to clickbait titled. That's the, call every YouTuber right now and tell I, them that. Is every YouTuber here? No, but if you, if you have that issue, call them and tell them to do the same. Issue. I don't care about every YouTuber. I care about you as my friend. And I know that loopholes like this in your journey is why what, you I, what I know I'm doing, start. what I know I'm doing. We're going to end this in two seconds. What I know I'm doing. Punch in the face. No, we're not. I know. I know I'm not like, I know I'm not putting your boobs <laughs> in my thumbnails to get mm -hmm. views. I know I'm not, um, I know I'm not disrespecting my yeah. family, my sisters or girls. I'm not doing anything that's. You're not disrespecting girls. Like on this journey, give me a title. Perhaps you have thrown a girl under the bus. Perhaps you've thrown exes under the bus. Ooh. Perhaps you've done other things to throw people under the bus. Not to throw under the bus, no. We're going to agree to disagree. We're going to move on for a second because we're getting heated. Um, we're going to do something real funny. Are people watching? Um, are people watching? Yeah. Okay, people are watching. Maybe they're just like we're an old couple bickering. I don't know. We'll just tease it up for a second. We're still friends. He's sweating a lot, but it's fine. We're going to do something, which is really funny. So Yusuf actually was popular way before I was. Right, I was starting off on YouTube, and Yusuf was like the mother effing man. I lived in Toronto, and I I'm still the man. Questionable. <clears throat> and now <laughs> I'm kidding. You are the man. Thank you. In some regards, and stuff. Um, your entrance music was "I Can Show You the World," mm -hmm. so you know, questionable. But I, I don't know if you remember, I used to tweet you so often. You did. When you were somebody, and I was. A nobody. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually have some of the tweets that I tweeted you. Okay. I couldn't find any of your replies because you deleted all of your tweets, mm -hmm. right? But I want to, this is actually to take the tension off of you and put it onto me to show you how thirsty I was for Yusuf's attention. Okay. I was thirsty, literally thirsty. Okay. And the first tweet I ever <laughs> tweeted you, ready? Uh -huh. All right. It was, Fussy Tube, let's do a, 
You can tell it's old school because I said collabo, not even collab. Mm. Yeah. All right, let's do a collabo. I'm a persistent little bugger. Who says bugger? That's me trying to be someone. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. I thought I was like Mary Kay or something. So just reply saying yes. Kay, thanks. <laughs> I don't think you should reply. Are to those that, all way. tweets to me? Yeah. I also Yusuf did not reply to that. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to get Team Superwoman, that's how you know it's OG, because it was Team Superwoman, on this mission of getting FoosieTube to collab with me. Hashtag attack, oh my god, the thirst is real. Damn. I still don't think you um, replied. Then my fans went on this mission, okay. and I don't even need your tweet printed out, I remember exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. It was, hey, my fans went on an attack to be like, yo, collab with Lily, collab with Lily, collab with Lily. And you said something like, yeah, maybe one day, it will be great. And you faded the F out of me. Nice. Get out of here. Okay. I know you want to fiddle with something because you're nervous, but that's okay. Okay. Then you actually did interact and you said, thank. I said, thank you so much for the like and comment. Much appreciated. Good luck on Ellen. I think this is when that uh -huh. challenge she did yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Okay. Ew. Ew. This is ew. I'm embarrassed of this. This is ew. God, I'm embarrassed of this. What is it? I've never been paired up with FoosieTube, though. He's just way too cool for me. Oof. Clearly delusional. I must have been drunk. I must have been drinking at about 9 a.m. or something. Mm -hmm. Fusi too, possible to DM you, wanted to ask you what a collab you've done in the past, hoping you could advise me. I think you actually I did reply to, to that. Tell me with that. I yeah. did. Mr. Fusi too, if you are seeing this, hit a fellow smaller, less popular YouTuber up, not harassing Ooh. you for a collab, I swear I was. The thirst! I know where this is going. Then by the way. I think we became friends. Did we? I think so. Okay. I think you followed me and we got to know each other. Okay. And said, Hi, I'm sending you an angry text right now because you probably tweeted me something stupid. Aww. Um Can I have your dog? Answer is yes, clearly, as for today. Um Ew, God, this is so thirsty. Let me hear it. Oh my God. Let me Ew, hear it. can you read it actually? I can't even. <coughs> <laughs> Woo! Hey, Fussy Tube. That's, first of all, that's not how I sound. Calm down. Yes, it is. What up, Fussy Tube? It's your girl, Superwoman. And when am I going to get to touch your abs? Or I mean, when are we hanging out? Hashtag what? Repl oh, reply to use of Ericat. Yeah. LOL, sorry, that was so tempting. Yeah, yeah, less tweeting, more lap dancing. Let's talk about lap dancing for a second. Okay, <laughs> whoa, where are we going to go there? you know, I don't know if you felt this way. I'm just going to, this is not even on my sheet of things. Okay. This is just me wanting to address something with you. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if you felt this. Did you just check me out? No. I'm literally sitting right next I to you. I didn't. You can be the judge of that. You I didn't. <laughs> I feel like we've had a lot of bumps in our friendship. Yeah. Right? Okay. We were close and we kind of separated. Now we're kind of, I don't know, here. Uh, by the way, the last question you answered kind of semi honest. I'm going to do Thank that. Thank you. Um, this is all going back to help people outside, by the way. That's what we do with the money that we get now. Okay. So thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. So I'll just give it right to them then. I won't even give it to you. That's fine. Okay, great. Lies. Um, I'll give it to you. So here's the thing about the lap dance, right? <clears throat> so let's talk about the time Yusuf pranked me. All right, let's talk about this. Okay. Let's talk to somebody that's gonna prank me, okay? Because I do feel, I don't know if you know this, I think I texted you about it, but I don't know how serious you took it. For me, mm -hmm. that was when our friendship really drifted apart. 100%. And I want to make it real clear, I don't care that Yusuf pranked Like, I'm not upset that Yusuf pranked me. Yusuf, that's what he does. He, you pranked people before, that was your thing. Uh -huh. you I personally am not a fan of pranks. I think they make people feel uncomfortable. I think it's not fair to them. They didn't sign up for that. It's just cringe. I don't like seeing people in that circumstance. Mm -hmm. When Yusuf said he's gonna invite me over for a lap dance, everyone and their mothers were like, he's gonna prank you. And I was like, dude, he's not. Because Yusuf respects me and he knows. He knows I don't want that to happen. Because I've made it very clear many times to all my friends that pranked me, I don't enjoy being pranked. Mm -hmm. I just don't like it. So I go to this guy's house. I'm like, we're gonna do this lap dance video. I'm gonna get some of this booty on this right here. Mm -hmm. This booty be working now. He's looking right. I'm gonna give it a little squeeze, right? I get to his house, and not only were you in on it, but some mutual friends we had at the time were also in on it, mm -hmm. which made me annoyed as well. But I get there, and the first thing I say off camera to Yusuf, I was like, Yusuf, this is not a prank, right? And off camera, you're like, it's not. And I said to you, I'm telling you right now, if you prank me, it is going to affect our friendship. I'm telling you I'll be upset. I said it straight up. Yeah. And you're like, dude, it's not. You then proceeded to prank me. And I was so, although I didn't show it in the video, maybe you watched the prank video, I didn't show it. I was so damn annoyed. Because I thought, this guy does actually not care about our friendship. He just wants the video, wants the mm -hmm. views, and would do anything to get a good prank video. 
And I was so annoyed by that. And so for me, that was when our friendship, when I was like, yo, I don't want to be around this guy because he does mm. not care about our friendship. As a friend, mm-hmm. and I'm not even going to no excuses, no yep. justification, I sincerely apologize for that. Mm-hmm. And that's something I never forgot about. And that's like, you know, whenever I think of pranks again, it's like, it's one of those things that like, I'm like, nah, because I remember how I made you feel. Um, I've had plenty of people in the past tell me like, yo, don't like pranks, da da da, and I've mm-hmm. still done it. And it's always just been a laugh, but with you, I, I didn't take it into consideration. And that was my fault. My original intention, this is not to excuse it, I had told you this, was to get the rock. I thought you would have loved that. Didn't I think work. it's cute that you thought that was doable. It didn't work, so I thought, how can I do this and not piss her off? I was like, oh, she loves girl love. Let me get a girl th- How can, so wait, 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 train of thought. You sound like my ex. How can I do this and not piss her off? Let me just prank her because that won't <laughs> piss her off. So instead of the rock, let me do the next best thing and prank her instead of just giving her a I'm goddamn sorry. laugh dance. I'm sorry. Still haven't gotten the No, you dance. did. In one of the vlogs I gave you, and I always see this clip posted on Twitter again, it's like, the, I don't even know how my hips moved like that. You know which clip I'm talking about? It was at Alex's house. Everyone was there. I grinded hard. Okay, we have different definitions of hard. Um, anyways, <laughs> anyways, we're going to move on okay. to... I have two more things, actually. This one might be a little bit sensitive, so Ooh. feel free to not answer if you okay. don't want to. I think religion on the internet is a lose-lose situation, personally. 100%. I feel like when you're religious online, the comment section becomes about religion, it becomes a religious warfare, no one wants to discuss the content. You used to, like you said, do religious content, and then you're like, no, I'm just doing this for, the, for this facade, I'm not actually like this. But you recently tweeted saying, got to break my fast and pray on top of one of the highest towers in Qatar today. So now you've again incorporated religion into your... Well, that was my first tweet on religion Yes, in, in years, a long, long time. In years. Yes. So if I was to honestly ask you what is your religious stance, what would you say? Not going to answer. Not going to answer. All right. I'm, I'm going to give you five for admitting that you're not going to answer because that's respectable and I probably would not answer. Actually, no, I would answer. I answer everything. But that's okay. We're different people. It's fine. Um, but I will say for my friend Yusuf, mm. who I do feel for sometimes, I will say, you sweating like hell, first of all. You sweating like hell. I know. Damn, son, get this guy a wet cloth. He's dying up in here. Jeez. Um, I will say, Jeez. religion is actually, and this might be an unpopular opinion, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with standing for something that's an unpopular opinion. Mm-hmm. No matter what any religious text says, no matter what you think is right or wrong, religion is going to be subjective. You cannot have a right and wrong when you're referencing text or books or ideas that are thousands of years old. And I will say for my friend Yusuf, one of the things I do feel for a lot is that you get a lot of heat about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I never thought that was justified. I don't think that's okay. And so I will encourage all of you to not judge people based on what you think is right or wrong according to your religious beliefs. That's Mm -hmm. what I will say for you. Um, And hopefully one day, you don't get a lot of heat and you can talk about it. Well, what I do say, like I said this in a recent episode mm-hmm. was, because I, I, I mentioned that. I was like, hey guys, this was the first time I showed you guys any part of religion and I explained okay. how any country that I go to, I'm yes. going to take that opportunity to learn about their religion and yes. also pay respects to their religion. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if I'm going to be honest with how I feel about a religion, mm-hmm. and this is just how I feel in general about mm-hmm. it, I don't care about what religion anybody is, mm-hmm. what they believe in, where their values are, whatever. Like, I respect any and every belief. Like, right now in this room, I don't need to know what religion they are, and I don't care what religion they are. I respect them as people, and that's how I view. So religion to me, like, I respect people who have faith. I respect people who don't have faith. I respect, you know, whatever they want to do at the end of the day. Are they good people to me? Mm-hmm. Are they cool? Like, you. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to, I don't bother with it. And I'm an amazing friend, so. Yeah, so I don't, I don't mind. Great. I have one more thing, and then we're going to do something really fun and spicy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, she went I, want, I want to, no, I'm about to go in right now. I want to talk about one more thing, if okay. we're going to be really honest. Okay. And we can discuss any of this stuff off camera as well. I don't want you to think I orchestrated this whole thing to put you on the spot. Okay. I only kind of did that. Um, there's one more thing that I never told you about that, to me, annoyed the crap out of me. Ah, why have why didn't you tell me these things when they happen? Why didn't they come about? Why didn't we discuss like You know why? That's a, that's a really good. You know why I didn't tell you these things? Yeah. Because I was like, yo, I'm only going to answer and his actions are not going to be consistent the next time I see him. Okay, fair enough. I've always felt like the consistency was never there, so I never took the effort to tell you things. Okay. So now this me doing this 
is me once again believing in Yusuf, okay. as I always will, and I'll get more to why that is, but I feel like in our friendship, yeah. I have always, I don't know why, I've always had a soft spot for you when you go through issues. Okay. I don't know if you remember when we lived beside each other, you used to come over and be like, yo, I'm struggling with this, I remember this, and I always tried my best, whether you agree or not, I don't know, to be like, this is the advice I can give you about business, about team, about YouTube, about anything. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm an expert, but this is what I can tell you, right? You also, when you said, I'm not going to do pranks anymore, I'm going to do skits, there's one person the door you knocked on, that was me. And you said, I want to do a skit, I want to start doing skits, and I did that skit with you mm -hmm. about dating a YouTuber or whatever, did really, really well, well mm -hmm. on your channel, and you said you're never doing pranks again. Mm -hmm. That was before 20 pranks. So, my question, I've always tried to be there for you. Every time you want to do a video, I've always tried to be there for you. Mm -hmm. You have done the same for me for the most part. Okay. But the last annoyance I had was, so I did this Halloween shoot. We're not going to say what it was for because it never got released. This big Halloween video I did, and it fell through, but I remember I had so many of my friends, I had Alex, I had Lauren, I had, I had so many people there. And I don't know if you realize this, but you came and you put zero effort into this project I was working on. And you were like lying there and you wouldn't get up and you wouldn't put your energy into it. And I was just like, this mother effort, I can't see that I'm busting myself trying to get this done. I put no effort in. And that's why I felt like, yo, maybe he doesn't actually care about you, me as a friend. You know how there's two sides to every story? Yes, please tell me. So That's what we I never discussed, yes, tell me. my biggest insecurity and in uh -huh. something like I would love to learn on this journey yeah. is dancing. Okay. And that was straight dancing. Mm -hmm. So when the director mm -hmm. was saying like, Yusuf, come on, more. I'm like... Don't in, do motions. Okay. Giving it away. In my head, I'm like, yo, I think I'm dancing like MJ right now. Yeah. I thought I was doing my best. So me sitting down, not being enthusiastic to get up and dance, because each time I got up, that was hard for me. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I was like, damn, and I knew it in my head, I'm messing up this project. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to dance. And it required me to dance. Alex, he bust a move. Lauren, she mm -hmm. can bust a move. Everybody who was there, they can bust a move. Mm -hmm. Then there comes Yusuf, and you don't want me to do little things, but it, like, I, just feel like I don't even know how to do. This is the second project, you're doing it great. This is the second project where you've danced for something. And the first time you did it for me, you had no problem. You were like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I might be a little awkward, but I'm still doing it. When was that? That was for that Bollywood. Yeah, and I, I, I did like this yeah. and I did that, but it wasn't anything too crazy. All right. I'm glad I heard your side of the story yeah. this. I, I wish maybe we connected on that because I remember leaving being like, yo, he literally put no effort no, into No, 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 no. I, I did, and I even whispered to them. Like, I knew, like, I was not, like, I thought I was going to, when the video came out, I even whispered to them, like, imagine what I'm going to look like during this. That was hard. Like they were I'm like, we have different definitions of hard. <laughs> well, I don't know how to dance. So those moves, it was like, oh my gosh, like all that right. was scary. All right, all right. We're gonna See, take a break from this right now. Okay. I'll give you ten dollars for that. We're gonna take a break from this. Okay. We're gonna do something that everyone over there in this internet world has. Hi requested, guys. Has requested. I hope you're enjoying this. Everyone has requested. So <clears throat> when I said I was gonna do this live stream, all my fans were like, oh, you're just gonna pick the crappy questions. Like, what's your favorite color? Yada yada. I was like, oh. My fans like to get bright, you know, they like to get bright and sassy. They add one us all to do this. So what I have here is actually, I don't know if you know this, the internet is a filthy mother effing place. And all our fans, uh -huh. all these teeny bopper fans and teens and even older people, they actually get off on writing sick things about us on the internet. Okay. That's what they do. I have some fan fiction here about you and I. Okay. Really? I do. And we're going to read it. <laughs> okay. We're going to read some fan fiction. Um... I have two. How um, bad is it? Do they like go in? Like, they did. Things went in to other really? things. Really? Um, but I have two from your point of view and one from my point of view. Okay. So first, I'm gonna get you to do this one. Okay. I've you never. <laughs> side note: I've yeah. never yeah. read a fanfic before. Side note: I didn't even know what fan fiction was. Yeah. I have also never read a fan fiction. In fact, today when I was looking at them, I was like, "You have to download this." Like, how do I? This is the first time I've ever read fan fiction. You can't read it. <laughs> yeah. This is our first time reading fan fiction, and you have to understand from our point of view, like, um. we're friends. Never, even when I'm drunk or anything, has anything happened between us. Can oh, we agree on that? Yeah, true. The closest thing that happened was maybe Yusuf was drunk and said some flirtatious crap to me at Creator Summit. That is the worst that has ever happened. Don't worry. We'll put a pin in that. Okay. Um, so nothing has ever happened to you. So us reading this, it's like, what the F is wrong with you guys? But we're going to read this. Oh, this is from Yusuf's I remember point something of view. Creator, something. Okay. okay. Where am I reading? Just the highlights? Just the highlighted parts. Go for it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> she gives me a slight smirk as she crawled and plopped herself onto my lap. Her lips instantly went for my neck. 
I was hoping to feel some type of sensation when she did that, some type of spark, some type of electricity, but nothing. All I felt were wet lips against my lower neck. I glanced at her broodingly, an ounce of regret fighting its way into my thoughts. But instead of letting myself feel guilty, I crashed my lips into her. And just like that, I was numb. I have two questions. Number one, whoever wrote this, you're delusional if you think that he is going to be like, but nothing. What kind of trap? For putting the fiction in fan fiction, for sure. Because that is it. And then the, I crashed my lips into... Who wants someone crashing into, am I an iceberg? Like, are you the Titanic? What the F? What? Anyways, that was sickening to me. Um, I'm going to read one from my point of view. Okay. I, I can't even take this seriously right now. Mine's much longer, by the way. And also, I'd like to know there's way more fan fiction from my point of view towards <laughs> Yusuf than there was. So this is your cue to write some more from his point of view, because let's be real, in real life, Guys, this if you haven't noticed, way. if you haven't noticed, I learned this at a young age. She does a lot to prove to everyone that there's nothing there. That's actually not true. I just said that when I touched her abs and chest, I was like, yes, come through, ho. Yeah, but now, like, just let it be cool. Like, let it, it's fine. You don't have to prove to them I'm that not, you don't want I'm me. Not, I'm not proving. I just, you come up in here like, yo, so, you know. No, me trust me. I've, I've, d- I've never. I gotta I, shut that issue I've down. never tried. Because if I tried, I wouldn't be like that. That's what I said. There's a different side to me. Oh, you tried to tell me you got game. Immense game. That's very honest and true. And aside, you haven't you know, seen. Not creator someone when Yusuf was drunk. He said these words to me. He said, "I was leaving. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna leave now." And he was like, "If you're gonna leave, why the hell did I stay here? If I'm not gonna like, essentially, what he was saying was, if I'm not gonna get some, why the hell did I come here?" I didn't say that. That's essentially what you said in different words. Anyways, let's go to this fan fiction right now. My mic fell because even it is like, yo, this is trash. Okay. Okay. Let's hear <laughs> Ready? it. All right. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Let me hear it. I'm gonna inv- I'm gonna imagine it. Okay. Go go go! Okay. I'm there. I'm there. Just as I was about to pay attention to the movie, I felt Yusuf's warm, giant hand slide under my right hand, which was resting on his abs. So see that that I like. He caressed the back of my hand with his thumb. Don't really care about that. I didn't bother to take my hand away. I couldn't help myself from slowly lifting my head up to look at Yusuf's chocolatey eyes. <laughs> That's when I realized my eyes had been on his lips for a while now. His eyes traveled down my lips. That also made me realize that I had the side of my bottom lip in between my teeth, slightly biting it. Ooh, come through, ho. He pressed, ooh, mm. <laughs> He pressed his tongue to the seam of my lips. Mm. I slightly parted my lips to give him the access. <laughs> Apparently, I'm a parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't care of our surroundings as our tongues danced and twirled together. We were both on cloud mother effing nine. It says mother effing? Yep, they oh. all see my fans, come on. <laughs> Feeling this warm breath on my neck, I couldn't help but let out a slight moan. Ooh. Ooh. I like this one. I like this one. Yeah, cl- like, look, our tongues danced and twirled together. Basically, our tongues are the, in the sequel of La La Land is what I'm gathering from this situation. I like that one. All right, okay, I'm sure you do. Let's read that one. Okay. Right. Just the highlights? Give it to me, boo. <coughs> mm. <sighs> the font's pretty small, yeah. I had my arms around her waist as our hips moved in unison. Are we dancing? Her back was leaning against my chest as we both got lost to the beat of the music. We're dancing. Some Beyonce song followed the previous song and Lily instantly started grinding carelessly to the cadence of the music. My lust for her became stronger as I tried to keep my composure. It's been like two minutes and she already has me turned on. (laughs) Just by her stance and the way she was dancing against my crotch, I knew she was finally letting go and finally letting herself enjoy a little. And I was so effing happy about it. So in this fanfic, you're dancing just fine. I know. And That's all I was. Effort. Well, I do know um, how to just like stand on a wall and let somebody grind on me. That's the only kind of dancing Great. I Great. I was concerned. So if you want to like, work. I can stand there. I think your dog is feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> She's okay, good. I have one more for me. From okay. my point of view. All right. I took my hair off. You know what we should have done? What? You sh- somebody should have read it and we should have reenacted it. Like, I, like, you know, like acting, acting, practice acting. I'm going to ignore you and read now. Okay. okay. <laughs> I took my hair out of the towel and began to untangle it while Yusuf watched me. Oh. Hey, you missed one right there, he said, as he put his hands through my hair, then put his hand on my neck, 
while his thumb was resting on my cheek. They like thumbs. That is a run-on sentence also. They like thumbs. <clears throat> his hands eventually made their way to my waist as my hand wrapped around his neck. As our kiss was getting deeper and deeper, we made our way to bed. Oh, come through. He gently pushed me onto the bed. Okay, no, ho, it would go the other way around. And began to suck on my neck as I began to breathe heavier and then let out soft moans. Why does everyone want me to moan? I feel like you would moan. They just, they believe in the power of usage. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would. I would let out noises. I do. All right, we're going to conclude that segment with the... Honest hour, right? Okay, that's great. That's fantastic. I'm going to conclude this by saying, and because you were, you were really honest about that, I'm going to give you 10 more dollars. Nice. Um, I'm going to conclude this because I think you've been uh, done great so far. You've been very honest. I've grilled you a lot. Mm -hmm. You've been a great sport. Mm -hmm. This is your chance to ask me anything, what about friendship or whatever. You, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions for me, you can turn the tables and ask um, me anything. I don't have any questions for you, but you know how you said that you had stuff that bothered you? Mm -hmm. I've had stuff that bothered me. Yes, please tell me. Now, if, I for if you want to. If I've forgotten and you actually did, mm -hmm. Then my deepest apologies, That's fine. but my recollection mm -hmm. it didn't. So okay. I'm gonna ask you. Yeah, yeah. My first movie, yeah. Tyler Perry's uh -huh. Boom and the Halloween. Yeah. After the release and everything and the mm -hmm. red carpet, I don't think I ever got a text from you. Yeah. And I never got a congratulations. I never got a like anything. And what I've always made sure to do, as bad of a friend that I may have been in the thing, mm -hmm. when you have something, I congratulate you. Mm -hmm. Whether it used to be through Twitter or recently your movie, like I was stoked. And I texted you right away to let you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like I got a congratulations for You're that. You're right. You probably didn't get a congratulations. You did get a text with a picture of the movie promo in the group, squad group, being like, yo, Yusuf, I see your movie poster. So that's dope. Uh -oh. But that's I still not the same as congratulations. Uh -huh. I apologize for that. I think this was after the pranking situation, right? Maybe. And I think I was just so like, no, this guy does not. Yeah. So I think I was so And then I think that. it happened again with the second movie. I don't think I got anything there either. What second movie? Oh, the, the one with Lele. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, and that, like, to me, and I remember I talked to somebody about it at the time. I was like, yo, I'm hurt. Humble? Because, no. Oh. Um, I think it was a girl I was talking to at the time. I was like, yo, I'm hurt because, I, again, I got something from everybody and stuff, but I felt like I was always there to congratulate you and be, like, your biggest fan, but I felt like when it was my time, you know, to, and, like... And I apologize. If that's how you felt, I would never want you to feel that way. It might have just been me being like, yo, I'm so salty about this prank, and I'm salty that that's, he hasn't done fine. anything to make up for that or acknowledge that and so I'm not gonna I think I did pull away like I said I need to be around and selfishly so I need to be around a certain energy mm -hmm. and when I'm not I do pull away because I'm like not my mental health I'm not down with that mm -hmm. so that's probably why you fell away and I apologize and I'm very proud of you and you're wonderful and you're doing great if you could just stop clickbaiting now okay anything else um <laughs> all right so you've made it known mm -hmm. you're not into me and all this stuff um I want to know right now with your busy career yeah. and your busy schedule uh -huh. and all that you got going on, uh -huh. do you have love in your life right now? Are you no. trying to find love? Is it, a, is it something you want but it's not there because you're just so invested in career right now? Where are you in that? If it comes your way, are you going to accept it? So possibly the latter. This is my thing. I'm not, act, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, I'm really lonely and so I really would like to be in a relationship. Truthfully, my schedule is so busy that I don't have time to feel lonely. I have so many things going on. Mm -hmm. I'm so career driven. And the honest truth is if I was in a relationship, I would be a really bad girlfriend. You know, previously during Super when I was in a relationship and I was a bad girlfriend. And I don't like being bad at things. I don't want to be a bad daughter. I don't want to be a bad friend. I don't want to be a bad girlfriend. And my life does not allow me to be a good girlfriend right now. Having said that, if I met someone and I was like, oh, like you are really bringing out a part of me that is a part I love. And you're really helping me be ambitious and you're motivating me and I gain a lot from us being together, I would consider it, yes. I'm not against the idea, but I'm not seeking, mm -hmm. actively seeking. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so you obviously care Are you about- asking for a friend or? Nah, just wanting to know. Okay. I'm sure they wanted to know as well. Okay. So, um, not, not, uh, I know you care about your brand and you care about your business yes. and you care about how it's perceived. I mean, yes. there's a lot of celebrities who work with you. Mm -hmm. So what you pull on average, your views, mm -hmm. you can use to your advantage when your team is working towards business deals and stuff like that. Let's say there was a glitch on YouTube mm -hmm. and your views that you're known to get mm -hmm. weren't coming mm -hmm. and there was something wrong with your channel mm -hmm. and your AdSense, mm -hmm. there was something hugely wrong. So now when you're uploading a video that you worked hard on, you're getting 300,000 views on your main channel mm -hmm. and your AdSense is like shut off mm -hmm. and you know other people's are working just fine. Mm -hmm. 
Your videos get, when you post, go on restricted mode, even though you're there, you know they're not meant to be restricted. Yep. And you know there's something wrong because you're not being in people's recommended phase. Uh, would you not, would that not be a concern for you and something where you'd stop and be like, hold up, something's wrong. Let me call somebody up on YouTube. Yo, YouTube, because you know, Lily, Superwoman has the power to contact YouTube mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Like you matter to YouTube. Yep. And I will go as far as to say, you matter to YouTube mm -hmm. on a higher precedence than a lot of other creators do. Mm -hmm. You're one of their top priorities. Mm -hmm. So if that happened, would you now as a content creator not be like, F this, I need this fix. I'm, you know, th you guys have to do something and that'd be a concern to you? Yeah, that's a very good question. <clears throat> I, when that whole YouTube restricted mode thing happened, I'll openly say that my AdSense, as far as I know, was not re-affected. I make super PG friendly content. Mm -hmm. and so I do have a direct link with YouTube. I did experience a downfall in views mm -hmm. because of whatever algorithm changed because of however my videos were being recommended. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I didn't change what I was doing on YouTube. I did contact my YouTube partner manager, like, yo, what's going on? Let me learn about this. Let me try to figure out what the new mm -hmm. algorithm is. Let me do something to remedy this instead of just complaining about it, right? Mm -hmm. And this is something I've always had an issue with, with creators, is when something goes wrong on YouTube, there is a sense of entitlement that's like, oh, well, my money's not the same, so F YouTube. Well, why do you feel like you have the right to make money off your videos to begin with? Mm -hmm. That is a first world belief you don't have the right to make money off your videos. You have the right to put videos up online. But now you want to complain that you're not going to make money off those videos because they don't satisfy whatever ad people want. Obviously, that's how YouTube works. They work off ads. Mm. So if you want to sit there and complain saying, but I want to do inappropriate things in my videos and get paid for them, guess what? You're entitled and that's not accurate. But if my ad sense and stuff did go down, I'm confident enough to say that I have my business in such a place where if my ad sense was at zero, I have enough other revenue streams in my business to not make that destroy me. And I'm grateful to say that, mm -hmm. but it's not only luck, it's also me proactively doing that, mm -hmm. which is why in the past I've told you, and you can, you can honestly tell them, I've always like, Yusuf, you need to reach out to YouTube. You need to have a good relationship with mm -hmm. these MCMs. You need to have a good relationship with YouTube because, and I'm not being BS, cut the BS, when you say YouTube cares about you and your priority, one of the main reasons as to why that is is because I am easy to work with. Mm -hmm. I don't get as many views as a lot of other people. There's people that have way more views than me. And so from a business standpoint, they should be the priority. Maybe why I get things resolved on YouTube and they care about me is because I'm easy to work with. Mm -hmm. I'm not jumping on Twitter, hating on YouTube when something goes wrong. I'm not cussing them out, I'm not doing any of that stuff. If I have to address something, I do it in a professional manner. So my channel, FusiTube, yes. like it's messed right now. Mm -hmm. It's not reaching the amount of reach it should be reaching mm -hmm. and the monetization, as I said, mm -hmm. literally $400 in comparison yep. to 8,000 mm -hmm. to 12,000. I yes. was on the phone with YouTube and mm -hmm. I told them, mm -hmm. I said exactly what you just mm -hmm. said. I was like, look, I as a creator, I'm not entitled to get squat. Mm -hmm. If this is how much I should be getting, mm -hmm. then God bless, that is a blessing from above. I'm happy with it. But if there's something wrong mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be like this, yeah. I deserve for that to be fixed mm -hmm. because this is a business and I'm taking care of a couple of yeah. people. And all I've been getting, I've been working quietly behind mm -hmm. the scenes for months. Hey, YouTube, something's wrong, something's wrong. Because what happened on Dosa Fusi when I came back, two weeks in a row, every video hit a million views. Mm -hmm. There was a bug in the system, dropped to 300,000, flatlined, AdSense mm -hmm. got messed up. Came to FusiTube, started this journey. With day one to 15, every video was getting a million views by 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. I missed an upload schedule by five hours. Mm -hmm. Algorithm got messed up, everything got messed up, but the AdSense has always been messed up. Mm -hmm. And I have been trying and trying and trying and my YouTube person what they did they passed me on to somebody else and they said in an email hey sorry we can't help you with this here's this person but can we be real honest in the past your relationship with YouTube you have not always been the easiest to work with is that true or false with YouTube no with companies other companies yeah, YouTube no I've never had a problem with YouTube I haven't had a problem with YouTube and I haven't even had a direct thing because I used to have a manager. I used to have um, an agent and all, all that stuff. All I know stuff. is that I, you've told me in the past that there were some times when you wouldn't respond to them or you've dropped out of things and things have happened. We just had a conversation upstairs. So all I'm saying is that, correct, if something's wrong with your channel, they yeah. should fix it. Yeah, so there but is right you now. you can't expect to be like, yo, I've been difficult to work with and now something's wrong, so fix it right away. It's not fixed right away. It's been yeah. months. It's but been a, months. All the, like, it's been months for my issue and, as well. But I've and heard I've stories. Been easy to work I've with. heard stories yeah. of other creators having their issues fixed and other people mm -hmm. being prioritized and getting it fixed. But mm -hmm. come to mind, and this is me a chance right now because I'm sure somebody at YouTube is watching this mm -hmm. saying, yo, 
There are creators who want to mend a relationship because mm -hmm. I said that in all my emails. I yep. kissed their butts and I said, I want a healthy relationship mm -hmm. with you guys and I'm working towards that. I'm, I'm contacting you now with no manager, no agent and everything. Now help me work there. Mm -hmm. And now I'm waiting to get that back. But is because that not warranted because of everything that's happened in the past? No, because there's so people. That's when I agreed to. We were no, to because agree. look, then that's saying like I'm the Fousey Tube is the hardest person to work with in the in the system. No, no. that's not what I'm saying. There are I'm so saying... many more people who are like that, mm -hmm. but not everybody is getting the precedence to be taken care of on YouTube at this time. You know, can I just? Uh, we can talk about this more off camera because I think we went over time. But the last thing I want to say is that I think a common thread here is that stop caring about other creators. You know, in this conversation, at least ten times you've mentioned other creators and what other creators are doing and this that and. I'm only talking about you and I. And I understand you know? that, but what I'm saying here is if we all work in the same business, yeah. which we do, we mm -hmm. all fall under Google and they're the ones giving us our money. Yeah. If my boss, mm -hmm. if I know that, I'm taking this for a second mm -hmm. for an example, yeah. if I know that I put in my work mm -hmm. and I, I did my thing and I have my quality, but my boss comes to me and goes, oh, there's something wrong, mm -hmm. here's this, mm -hmm. but then they go to somebody else and they go, here's mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. it's like, all up in my drink. It's like, why, why am I getting, where, where's the issue here? Mm -hmm. Why am I, why is every video that I post, even when I'm praying on the top of the thing, going on restricted mode? Why is, um, why am I not uh, in the algorithm, algorithm anymore? What is going on here? Help me fix it, help me understand. But my response, hey, we understand your frustration and we do value as a creator, but unfortunately at this time, we do not have a remedy to fix mm -hmm. your issue. Although we do agree that there is an issue. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, you're not the only person going through that. It's also been me. It's also been other people. I'm taking this. Unmentioned. Not to the extent of not, and I, well, I beg to differ because you, you don't know that. You don't know. That I've talked, sure. but the sources that I've talked to, mm -hmm. nine out of ten are not even close to the ninety percent percentile drop that has happened on my. Okay, so I'll tell you what. After this live stream is done, we're gonna go into our analytics, uh -huh. and we're gonna have a conversation about this. That's fine. And I'm gonna look at your analytics. That's fine. I'll okay. show you, and you're gonna because I've showed other people, and they were mm -hmm. like. What? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like literally when I asked certain creators, how much are you getting per this? Mm -hmm. And they told me, and then I told them mine, you should see, because I always knew when I used to create YouTube back in the day, and I did, I, I do have a vendetta a lot of times against other creators. I always said, these YouTubers saying, I love my audience. I do this, I love my audience. Shut off their AdSense and watch what happens. Mm -hmm. When this ad apocalypse happened, people were shitting bricks. Every conversation I was having behind the scenes is, oh my God, what, are, what is gonna happen? I'm not getting $50,000 a month anymore. My, my life is over. I need to get another job. Where I'm saying, they're like, damn, what happened to the love? Mm -hmm. But their issues are fixed and resolved, so they're chilling now, and now they're just happy that it's not happening to them. Mm -hmm. So me, somebody, like look, F the money. And I, that, I don't have other revenue streams. I don't have merch. I don't, I'm not doing other stuff. I do have merch, but it's not something I do. Mm -hmm. Like, I but just want... to do merch. For this project, and the money is going to be for the charity. Okay. I'm just saying, I feel like as a creator, to mend my frustrations and all that stuff, either tell me there's nothing we can do about it, and th this is as it's going to be, or let help me talk to fix this. Because like you said, they gave you like suggestions. Mm -hmm. I've done those suggestions mm -hmm. as well, but still haven't had anything. Mm -hmm. But I've seen other creators get their issues fixed. Great. Well, we're going to go through the analytics. We're going to figure it out. I'm not YouTube. I can't answer questions. I'm just a creator that makes content. I want to end this by first of all saying thank you to all of you for watching this very intense and but honest and wonderful. I'm going to actually say you were way more honest than I thought you were going to be. I'm going to give you the rest of these five dollar bills. Thank you. Um, you can give them. Let me get one thing. Forward. Yes, sure. Just one kiss on the cheek, just That's... like as a friend. Because Arabs, I'll tell you what. when Arabs say, say hi to each other, they kiss each other mm -hmm. on the cheek. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, right? Yeah, but it. I, th I meant it was like yeah, that. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, um, we will. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I just don't understand why that has to be the the aim of this live stream. <laughs> that's not the aim. Since you got here, you're like, give me a kiss on the cheek. Give me a kiss on the cheek. I'll give you a kiss on the cheek when I feel like giving you a kiss on the Do cheek. Do you, girl? All right, all right, boo. So thank you for joining us on After Moon. I want to end this on a positive note by saying I know I gave you a really hard time. You're a really, really good sport. And the actual point I want to get across, I know I grilled you on the clickbait and us not agreeing on certain things, yada, yada. Here's the thing about Yusuf, right? Is you do a lot of things to annoy me. And I probably do a lot of things to annoy you too. We both annoy each other. But there's always going to be a part of me that feels for you because we're friends and I care about you. Yeah. And so the real, the point of this honestly is like, even though I agree, just disagree, and even sometimes on your journey, I might be like, you're BS and you're so full of crap. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like that sometimes. It doesn't mean I'm not going to support your journey. It doesn't matter if I agree with your journey, is the point of this. It doesn't mm -hmm. actually matter if people agree with your journey or not. It doesn't matter if I agree. That's not why you're doing it. And for that reason, I will still support it. And if it's what you need to do, I will support it. I will give you money. You can stay here if you need to stay here. As long as I get my work done, I don't give a F. I will do whatever I can to support you. Thank and that's you. what I wanted to say. And with that, I will give you a kiss on the cheek.
because you're a good sport and you're a good friend. Thank so you. thank you to all of you for watching. Let me know what you thought and let me know, comment below. Let me know who else should be a guest on Ask Super Life or Super Super Honest Cut the BS Vibes. Um, and hopefully I don't think any creator is going to have that intense of an episode that you bring on. You'd be surprised. Like that, like the fire was here. We like, the thermometer is here right now. Yeah, I don't turn on the AC. That's another reason. Yeah, you can take your shirt off if you want. Anyways, I'm going to go now. Show some love to Yusuf's journey. Where can they watch it? Uh, right now, every day uh, on FusiTube. Mm -hmm. And yo, hold them accountable. And I don't call them vlogs. I call them episodes now. Okay, great, so. great. Episodes. Hold him accountable for everything he talks about in his videos because that's necessary for growth. I'm glad we got to do this. I'm glad we got to do this. One love, super one. That is a wrap. And Zoom, I will see you next month on a date. I will let you know about. Bye.